Hey there and welcome to Snapblade Tank Guide. Snapblade excels at reducing the damage your enemies do, thanks to having access to major and minor cowardice. Together, these two buffs will reduce the damage of your enemies by approximately 16.5%. You can reliably keep up minor endurance and intellect, increasing your group sustain. You have access to AoE minor vulnerability, and you can easily deal with AoE damage thanks to having access to major evasion. Before we start though, I wanna give you a heads up that some of the chapters in this video are copied from the DK guide because there was nothing or barely anything new to be added. The only change in the guild chapter is that they remove Vykosa from useful defensive sets, enchants and traits have small changes, skills are obviously entirely different, CP and attributes are slightly changed. Everything else is exactly the same, so if you've watched the previous guide, you can skip those. So, let's get started. Gear. I'm using the wizard's wardrobe add-on to quickly swap between setups, but I'll also talk about how to set up your gear if you don't want to use that add-on or if you're a console player. We're gonna start with form and content, so dungeons and arenas. Against Trash, your monsters the choices are Spolder of Ruin, paired with One Piece Magma Incarnate Most reliable option, but reduces your sustain Archdruid Deverick is in theory the strongest option But in practice it's really bad against Trash because it often bugs out on uneven terrain And Kratis if your team has mainly fire damage, but you'll have to slot flame damage abilities So I would advise against that Tremor Scale if your damage dealers are in medium armor and they need additional penetration 5 piece sets you can use are Yolna Cream, very easy to proc it's best to use it on body since you want it to work on both of your bars. Crimson Oath can be put on body or back bar. Useful if your damage dealers need more penetration but don't combine it with Tremor Skill, one is enough. Olorim can be put on back bar and is the best option if you don't have a healer with you, providing magic courage. Powerful Assault can be put on body or back bar. Its main disadvantage is it requires you to cast an Assault ability. Turning Tide can be put on body if you're not using Archdruid, but its usefulness depends on your group. In an experienced group, this set will most probably proc while the trash is almost dead. Perlesson Ward is only slightly worse than Yolna Kryn. On your front bar, Vate Shran Sword and Board is an absolute winner. It makes stacking ads so much faster. Master Sword and Board is an option if you wanna be safe. My preferred setup is Spolder, Yolna Kryn on body, Olorim on back bar, and Vatish Run on front bar. Against bosses, your monster set options are all the previously mentioned sets which are Spolder, Archdruid, and Kratis and Tremor scale, with a few changes. Archdruid becomes reliable because boss fights are usually on flat terrain, so I'd say it's better than Spolder. And Kratis' fire damage reduction becomes useful against some bosses, such as Arcasis in Stone Garden. I didn't mention that as a benefit against Trash because Trash doesn't hit hard. Nazarai is another good option if you're wearing Turning Tide, it'll also boost minor brittle and major maim, so you don't have to cast Destructive Clench that often. Since bosses are harder, you can also use some defensive monster sets such as Engine Guardian, Lord Warden or Earthgore. When it comes to 5 piece sets, Turning Tide is the best option on body this time. Yolna Kryn is still decent. Olorim is still best if you don't have a healer with major courage. Powerful Assault shouldn't be worn on body against harder bosses. It still has the disadvantage of eating up a skill slot, but Vigor isn't that bad anymore because the Resolving Morph gives you minor resolve. Crimson Oath is the best option if your DDs don't have enough penetration because they're in medium armor. But again, don't mix it with Tremor skill. Perlesson Ward is only slightly worse than Yolna Kryn, but it has the advantage of giving you massive mitigation when your group members die, making it easier to recover. On your front bar, Master Sword and Board is the best option by far. My preferred setup is Archdruid, Turning Tight, Olorim and Master Sword and Board. If you can't quickly switch between setups, just stay on your boss setup all the time. Now let's move on to Trials. I'll be talking only about unorganized pug runs because in an organized team a raid it will tell you exactly what to wear to support the group. If you're a main tank the best option is Archdruid, Turning Tide on body, Yolna Kryn on back bar and Master Sword and Board on front bar. If you're an off tank the best option is Spolder or Encratis as your monster set, Saxlid, Pearlescent Ward or Crimson off on body, Powerful Assault on back bar and Master Sword and Board on front bar. Once again, these are setups for unorganized groups. Archdruid and Turning Tide become less useful in organized groups where Major Wound can be taken care of by two Colossi Ults and a healer with Nazarite and Pearls. Once you feel comfortable enough, you can start using double eye stuff setups on some fights. In that case, if you've had Yolna on back bar, you'll now have to move Yolna to front bar, since that's where your destructive clench will be. Here's an example of main tank setup, main tank setup with eye staves, off tank setup, and off tank setup with eye staves. What to do if you don't have those sets? If you're a complete beginner, use crafted sets such as Fortified Brass, Heartland Conqueror or Serpent's Disdain. You can use Death's Wind or any set that has 2-piece armor bonus on your weapons. Here is an example setup. What if you haven't gotten into Trials yet? In Dungeons I've shown enough options to make a setup without Trial gear. You can for example use Turning Tide on body and Powerful Assault Backbar throughout the entire dungeon. In Trials, if you're missing a Trial gear, just use 
anything over it. The crafted setup I've shown before is enough to clear any normal instance of any trial, so you can farm the non-perfected version of for example Yolnakrin using your crafted setup before you go into Veterans Inspire to get the perfected one. Enchants. On body, the best enchant is Prismatic Defense. If you can't afford it, use a mix of Health, Stamina and Magicka enchants. On jewelry, the best enchant will depend on your skills. Most of the time I found Magicka cost reduction to be the most useful, but tri cost reduction can be better if you have some stamina skills. If you're a beginner, you can also use a single block cost reduction enchant. If you wanna see more explanations why these are my choices, I made a separate video about it. On weapons, if you're using sword and board on your front bar, the choice depends on the trait of your weapon. If it's charged, you can use shock enchant to proc minor vulnerability, but this will be useless if you have a warden already applying minor vulnerability with their fetcher, or if you are using lotus fun. If you're not using charged weapon, then you can use either a weakening enchant or sustain poison. If you have an eye staff on your front bar, I'm gonna assume you have charged trait. The choices are absorb stamina enchant. It will proc minor breach which you lack because you don't have access to pierce armor anymore. But it can also be applied by Templar's Power of the Light or Damage Dealer's Physical Damage. Frost Enchant. It will proc minor brittle which means you won't have to cast Destructive Clench that often. Shock Enchant. It will proc minor vulnerability. But in my opinion most of the time it will be useless. Double Eye Staff is a setup you do in more optimized groups and there you'll have someone else taking care of minor vulnerability. On your backbar weapon, which will always be an Eye Staff, you want Crusher Enchant. Traits. Reinforce combined with Divines provides around 4% damage mitigation and 84 magicka recovery if you're using Atronac Mundus. And it is the best setup overall, with other traits outperforming it only in rare situations. Story Day can be useful for beginners who block a lot of attacks they don't have to block, but in my opinion it's not worth using at all, since it will be a hassle to swap everything once you learn how to play. It's much better to go with the Reinforced Divine setup and use a block cost enchant, which you can easily swap out later. Well fitted can also be useful in niche situations. For jewelry, the best trait is infused. You can also use swift in trash fights. Once again, if you want to see explanations why, go see my video about jewelry. For weapons, the trait on your one-handed weapon should be charged, decisive, defending, or nern hound. I'd say charge is the best overall. Decisive can be good in trials where all of the debuffs you could apply with enchants are already covered by other people. Defending will give you around 4% damage mitigation, so it's a good defensive option. Nern hound will give you additional 200 weapon and spot damage, which will make it easier to reach the threshold required to get 6% bonus on your engulfing flames ability, but you can reach that threshold without it. If your front bar weapon is an eye staff, then charge is the best option. On your back bar weapon, which will always be an eye staff, you should use infused trait. Skills. Just like with gear, I'm gonna go over multiple setups between which you can swap using add-ons. And I'll also mention how to set up your skills if you're not going to swap at all. This is the skill setup against trash packs and dungeons. Refreshing puff is used mostly while running between trash packs for the major expedition. You can also slot Lotus Fun instead of it. Your first priority is using Destructive Clench to turn dangerous adds. If there are none, you can skip that and start with the next step, throwing cloud drops. Then drop elemental blockade, use power slam to trigger Vatish run, and use pulsar to snare all the smaller enemies. Chain in enemies that didn't get hit by Void Bash. After that, just keep up debuffs on the big enemies. Make sure to pierce armor big adds to apply minor breach. That's only supposed to be some rough guideline, so you're not completely clueless on what to do. You'll always get better results by thinking for yourself. If you don't have Vatish Run Sword and Board, Power Slam is useless, so instead you can slot Mask Hysteria or Revealing Flare. Against bosses and dungeons, this is the base setup, and there's a few changes you can do based on encounter to make yourself more useful. Refreshing Path isn't needed if another support provides minor endurance and intellect. Lotus Fun provides AoE minor vulnerability, so it can be useful if you have to keep up that debuff on multiple targets. Against a single target, a Charged Shock Enchant or Warden's Fetcher ability will be enough. Depending on the encounter, you will also have to swap in Chains and Crushing Shock. If you don't want to have multiple boss setups, then replace Leeching Strikes or Power Extraction with Chains, since ending up with a Chains in a fight where you need to pull in adds will be horrible. The defensive skills which you can swap in are Revealing Flare, Resolving Vigor, Immovable and Defensive Stance. Remember that if you're using Powerful Assault, you'll have to slot Vigor even if you don't need additional defensive skill. Mirage and Resolving Vigor provide the same buff, so if you're running Vigor and you don't need Mirage's Major Evasion, you can unslot it. You don't need two altars, so if your hero runs it, you don't have to. The two ultimates you can use are Aggressive Horn, best for improving group's DPS, or Reviving Barrier, best for helping the group survive, and it will also passively increase your magicka recovery while slotted. If you're the only Nightblade in the group and they have to provide minor savagery, you should have an assassination ability on your front bar. You can either put Lotus Fan or Mirage on your front bar, or put Incapacitating Strike Ultimate there. Here's the setup for trash and bosses if you absolutely don't want to swap anything. Keep in mind you'll still need Crushing Shock and Immovable for some fights, but those are so rare you can just take your time and slot them manually when you encounter those. 
This is the setup for Trash in Trials. Making a setup for bosses in Trials is pretty much the same process as making a setup for dungeon bosses. If you're wearing double eye stuff, remove Pierce Armor, move Destructive Planks to your front bar, and slot whatever defensive or utility ability you want on your back bar. Just because I didn't mention some skill doesn't mean you shouldn't use it. There's way too many utility skills that will be useful in some rare occasions, such as Shadow Image or Race Against Time, and it's impossible for me to cover every possibility. Champion points. In the red tree for Trash, a setup of Boundless Vitality, Fortified, Rejuvenation and Celerity is almost always best. For bosses you get more options. My default setup for bosses is Boundless Vitality, Fortified, Rejuvenation and Bracing Anchor. And depending on encounter, other useful CPs are Celerity, Sustained by Suffering and On Guard. Which slot boss you're gonna unslot to feed these depends on the encounter and the type of damage you'll be taking. For example against max HP based dots, such as Bossy Fight, the best setup will be Fortified, Sustained by Suffering, Rejuvenation and Celerity. Against blockable direct damage, such as the Warrior Fight, the best setup will be Boundless Vitality, Fortified, Rejuvenation and Bracing Anchor. In the blue tree, your base setup should be the 4 mitigation CPs, which are Ironclad, Duelist's Rebuff, Enduring Resolve and Unassailable. But that's just the base and you can get more out of it if you prepare for each fight. Because most of the fights in this game don't have all 4 of these damage types. The two other useful slotables are Bulwark and Focus Mending. So let's take main tank in Bassi as an example again. You can throw away Unassailable because you don't need Area of Effect damage reduction. And you can throw away Ironclad because even though there will be some direct damage attacks, most of the damage will come from the dot. So you'd end up with Duelist Rebuff, Enduring Resolve, Bulwark and Focus Mending. Race. Unfortunately the races are not balanced at all and Nord is much better than anything else. And the difference is not small, it's about 7% damage mitigation. You can of course change the build a bit on other races to get more armor but then you lose sustain. Pick Nord if all you care about is performance, otherwise just pick any race that looks cool to you. Food. The best food is Orzorga Smoked Bear Hunch, but it's expensive. Jewels of Misru provide slightly lower stats and are way cheaper. When main tanking Cloud Rest in Execute you will want to lower your max HP, so you will switch to Candid Jester Coin. Attributes. Most of the time it's best to put all your points into health. It'll increase your survivability and increase scaling on some of your abilities. Having bigger resource capacity is useful but not at the cost of health. If you're playing a race with racial bonus to maximum magicka you'll have to put some points into stamina to make sure it's higher than magicka so that stamina is your dominant resource. Just keep in mind that having a siphoning ability slotted will increase your max magicka by 8% but that shouldn't be an issue on an Nord. Mundus. Most of the time the Achanak which increases your magic recovery is the most useful. If you didn't choose Nord as your race then the Lady which increases your armor is also an option to make up for missing armor. The Steed which increases your movement speed can also be useful in places such as Cloudress but it's not necessary. Potions. Most of the time you wanna use the Tricep Potion which restores all of your resources and boosts their recoveries by 30%. You can craft it by combining Columbine, Bugloss and Mountain Slower. A better alternative though much more expensive is Harrison Potion which boosts your ultimate generation instead of restoring health. You can craft it by combining Columbine, Dragon's Blood and Dragon Rim. Tips If you're using Sword and Board, make sure not to bar swap right after casting Destructive Clench. Minor Brittle can only be applied while wielding Ice Staff, so if you swapped your one hand and shield bar before projectile hits the enemy, you won't apply it. Also, do not put a point in Tri-Focus passive. That's all I have to say about Nablet Tank. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And if you want to see more of my content, you can subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.